guys, uh, Steve here in Adelaide. Um, I always wanted to build a uh, CAF racer, so I went online and I found a couple of uh, Honda CX uh, 500s up in the country. So I went up and picked them up, brought them back down here, and they were in a pretty grubby state. They'd been in a shed for like 10 years, so the aluminium needed uh, cleaning up, and to do that it was going to cost me like 500 bucks. So I decided to build myself a wet blast cabinet and uh, found a young Kiwi guy, I uh, don't know his name, but his uh, YouTube site is Armory Enterprises. And I'll leave a link in that to the, in the description because he's done a lot of the, the groundwork on these cabinets. Uh, in Australia, these uh, cabinets are called Hafco. Uh, I got mine from General Tools here in Adelaide, and also available at Paramount Browns, uh, Harbour Freight in America. And they must have made millions of these things because they're all over the place. But um, yeah, I'll just go in and show you uh, the components of the wet blast system now. Okay, let's take a look at the components within a wet blasting cabinet system. Over on the left here, we have the compressor and you're going to need a decent sized compressor because these blast cabinets use a lot of air. This one puts out 11.5 uh, cubic feet per minute free air delivery and it keeps up pretty well. It uh, cuts in and out but it, uh, it does keep up. Coming out of the compressor we go into a regulator now I'm using two types of media. I'm using aluminium oxide and glass bead. So I use different pressures. I use six bar on the aluminium oxide and five bar on the glass bead. Out of the regulator we go into a three quarter 12 volt DC motorized ball valve. And actually on the inside of the cabinet there I put a half inch check valve. Now you're going to need a check valve there because if you're not running your air and the pumps running you will divert media into the air system and you certainly don't want glass bead in the air system. On the side we have our electrical cabinet uh, 240 in into a 12 volt 9 amp DC transformer and some uh, Arduino uh, circuitry to be able to latch the foot switches on. Coming around to the front, uh, we have three foot switches. On the left, we have the pump on and off. The second one on the right is the air on and off. And the first one on the right is the windscreen, windscreen wiper on and off. Now these uh, switches uh, normally open uh, micro switches, so if you put your foot on, uh, the pump or the air will come on. If you take your foot off, then they'll switch off. So you have to have your foot on there all the time, which I, I didn't want. So I did some Arduino circuitry to latch these on. So now, if I press the air switch on, the air will come on, and if I and stay on, and if I press the switch again, it will then switch off. Looking upwards, we've got the tank system. Uh, I wanted an interchangeable tank system because I'm using two media, glass bead and aluminium oxide. So I can change these tanks out pretty quickly. Just uh, take the pump up, drop the tank, and I'm into another type of media. Above, you are going to need a, a windscreen wiper to keep the window clear, because it does get messy in there, and you do get stuff on the, on the window. You're also going to need a good light. The light that comes with the cabinet is pretty pretty poor, doesn't give you a lot of light, so uh, I put in a waterproof LED light there to give me plenty of light. Coming round the side of the cabinet, I've only just recently put this on, 
Uh, it's a uh, marine uh, air extractor, uh, 12 volt DC, and it's working really good uh, for taking the, the mist out of the cabinet. Now I'll just give you a demo of the uh, extractor fan as it's working. I'll put, put the air on. Now I've got no pump running, I'm just going to put the air on and that will actually siphon water out of the tank. Pretty clean water. So if you want to wash something down you can uh, just uh, turn your pump off and put your air on. So here we go with the air on. So we've got air and water coming out of there. Spreading lots of mist. Turn the air off. You can see the amount of mist in there. So I'll just go and put the uh, extractor fan on. And it does take out the uh, vapor that's in the cabinet pretty quick. And while we're, while we're blasting, it's just helping to uh, keep things pretty clear in there. Okay, looking inside the cabinet, uh, I'll just open the door. Uh, as I open the door, I've put a plastic uh, shield on there, just uh, clear plastic, about 5mm thick, and it's working really well from keeping uh, media buildup on the door and water. It's deflecting that, all that media and water back into the cabinet. Um, put extra uh, foam around the entrance here and it's working very well. This cabinet uh, is not leaking any water at all or media. Uh, inside you can see the pump in there and the nozzle. Now uh, our young uh, Kiwi friend he's got a uh, very good video on how to make these nozzles so I suggest you go to Armory Enterprises and have a look at his nozzle. I made one follow his following his instructions and it's working really well. I'm really happy with it. And I've got the pump out of the tank, just sitting on the mesh here. Uh, this is just a submersible pump available on eBay for 80 bucks, 80 odd dollars. Uh, I've raised it to 50 mil off the bottom of the tanks to above the media because the media will build up and you don't want that clog in your inlet. Uh, on the outlet we have a three quarter T which is uh, the bottom is just straight three quarter which is um, going to stir the, um, the, uh, the slurry up on the in the tank and on the top I've got half inch to a half inch hose uh, going up to the, the gun, and the gun's here. Now, okay, we'll do a, uh, a media change. I've got uh, aluminium oxide in there at the moment, and I'll change it over to glass bead, and then I'll give you a, a demonstration of uh, the bla wet blasting. Uh, I've taken the pump out of the tank, and just got it sitting in the cabinet. So I'll now pull out the tank, Put this on in. Okay, that's it. Um, the glass beads in there. We just have to put the pump back into the tank, and we can get going. 
Now this is totally movable. This whole cabinet can move around on the casters, which makes it very portable. Okay, we're ready to do some uh, wet blasting. Now I've got a, uh, a spare CX500 motor here, which is pretty heavily corroded. And I think if I take one of these rocker covers, which you can see is pretty heavily oxidized, pretty hard to get this stuff off. So in the cabinet at the moment, I've got uh, aluminium oxide. So I'll, I'll start off, I'll do half aluminium oxide and half glass bead, just to give you a look. Okay, we're all set up. Uh, so I'll start the machine and uh, you can have a look at uh, how it brings up this rocket cover. Put the uh, fan on. One thing about having the fan on, it actually sucks with the gloves in so you can put your hands in very easily. Bring the pump on. That's a slurry coming out. That's uh, aluminium oxide there. And we'll hit the air. You see it taking the the black out, oxide off, which is, is pretty hard that stuff. take about five minutes I reckon to do half a rocker cover that's straight out of the cabinet unrinsed but uh, I'll just I'll just go outside and rinse that off okay just been outside and rinsed that off and just dried it off and so that's the sort of finish you're getting from 240 aluminium oxide. Now to me this this surface is absolutely perfect for painting. It's slightly rougher, it's a little bit rougher but uh, really really nice surface for the uh, paint to adhere to. So what I'll do now is I'll change the media over to um, glass bead and I'll do glass bead on the, the other side of the rocker cover. You can see the shininess of the uh, glass bead alongside the aluminium oxide, it's a, it's a lot brighter. Yeah, 
pretty good job of really of getting that uh, heavy oxidisation off. just go outside and give it a bit of a wash and I'll come back <clears throat> okay just give it a rinse off and uh, yeah you can see the difference there that the uh, the uh, glass bead definitely uh, does bring it up a lot more shinier than the aluminium oxide but yeah uh, horses for courses um, if you want something polished um, you'd start off with glass bead uh, if you want to paint something I'd go with the uh, aluminum oxide to uh, give it a nice, slightly rougher finish for the uh, paint to adhere to. Here's some of the parts I've already prepared. Um, these are going to be painted. Uh, these casings, uh, these are going to be painted. Um, like the, the clutch cover, that's been uh, glass beaded and polished. Same with the rocker covers. Now these rocker covers look exactly the same the ones that come off that dirty motor and now they're, they're looking uh, brand new so all in all uh, that's a pretty good job of cleaning up dirty old motorcycle cases okay guys well that's pretty much about it um, great uh, little unit to have if you're uh, doing any sort of motorcycle restoration uh, just a few tips I'll uh, offer as I uh, finish up uh, if you do buy yourself a, a new Hafco or um, Arbor Freight cabinet, uh, it comes in a flat, flat pack like everything. Uh, and when you assemble it, make sure you seal all the joints. Uh, don't use elastic. I've used a uh, polyurethane. Uh, this is uh, available at Bunning Armor Flex Clear. Uh, it's really good. So seal all your joints up. Um, then when you uh, decide on a tank, now I've used the uh, square tanks and uh, I used them because they were e easily available from the hardware store here in Adelaide. But uh, in reflection, um, I probably would have been better going with a circular tank because I think you'd get better circulation of the media. You wouldn't get, I do get a little bit of build up in one corner so uh, think about that, uh, maybe a circular drum of about 600 mil diameter. They're available you know, second hand on Gumtree. Um, and then when you finally go to start your uh, wet blast cabinet, don't be in a big rush to uh, throw the media into the water and get going. Put your water in and probably add about two cups of media and then run your pump for a while, so like five minutes, and then stop it and just see where your media is settling within the tank. If you've got a circular tank, I think it would work pretty well, but if you've got a, I had to change my uh, flow because I was getting a build up in sort of like half the tank, but uh, it's a good way of uh, checking before you get started, uh, just add a couple of uh, cups of media and run it and see where the media is settling. Um, yeah, like I've said before, I'm using uh, aluminium oxide and uh, uh, glass bead. Now, to check the concentration, what I do is I, I take a, just put the pump on, so you, you've just got the, the slurry going, and uh, take a, a sample, there's 250 mil sample, and I've probably got 25 mil of media in there I reckon so uh, I think they I'm not sure the actual stats on this but um, I think they normally recommend about 10 to 1 for uh, media to water so that would be pretty well 10 to 1 um, yeah so that's it guys I'll wrap up here and uh, good luck building your wet blast cabinet <laughs>